Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Gorelick, and I'm Professor of Translational Science and Molecular Medicine at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine in Grand Rapids, and I'm Medical Director of the Haunstein Neuroscience Center at St. Mary's. I have the pleasure today of introducing Dr. Frank Barone, and Frank, welcome. Thank you. Frank, Great to is, be here. Frank is a professor. Uh, and directs the cerebrovascular basic science research at SUNY. He's been doing some exciting work in vascular cognitive impairment. And Frank, as you know, this is a big problem from the clinical aspect, and we're really dying to have some really good work from the, from the basic science and to translate and to help us move forward to start preventing vascular cognitive impairment and its consequences. So what we'd like to do today is hear a little bit about some of your ideas, some of the great research that you've been doing. I know you've had some funding from the American Heart Association, so congratulations. Thank you. Why don't you go ahead and give us some idea about conceptually uh, what, you, what you've been doing. Now you're right about vascular cognitive impairment or dementia because eventually it's going to hit us all and it's going to be a tsunami they talk about it in the future uh, probably by 2025 it's going to increase dr dramatically and then by 2050 uh, my work has to do with combining vascular risk factors that can create a model associated with human clinical data of vascular cognitive impairment hypertension okay in hypertension rats plus carotid stenosis, okay? Either alone doesn't do much, but together we get this dramatic effect on co uh, cognition in several different assays and on gait and uh, gait imbalance analysis that has to do with changes that we also see in human VCI. So you've set up really an ideal situation here. It's very much like the human condition. Many of us have hypertension. If we don't have it yet, we will. The Framingham predictions are that about 90% of people will develop hypertension. That's a lifetime probability. The other problem that you're dealing with, of course, which is so important, is carotid stenosis. So you've got, an, you've got animal modeling here. You've got those two factors. And it sounds like when you combine these two factors, you start seeing the cognitive changes in the animal model. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned ataxia. And mm -hmm. so, can you tell us a little bit more about what part of the brain might uh, well, explain in, the, in this animal model these two findings? What we, what we know now, okay, in the model, is that there's an increase, well, we know there's an increase in susceptibility to vascular inflammation and coagulation associated with hypertension. And then the combined hypoperfusion seems to push it over the edge, and you start to exhibit the phenotype, okay? There's a significant inflammation in fiber tracts. Microglia are activated, they express TNF. And there's a loss in the myelin in the fiber tracts. And this is related to the development of this vascular cognitive impairment. This is a VCI, vascular cognitive impairment, that's independent of infarction. There's VCI that occurs following stroke. It involves a frank infarct and also some damage to fiber tracts as well. But this is something different. This could be something that precedes, okay, a, an actual stroke event that could make it worse, or it can occur in a lot of people, as has been seen. They're starting to study it more and more. Even peripheral cardiovascular re, uh, disease and effects on the heart can affect cognition in the brain. This is all new data coming out in the last five years. So we just decided to, let's take a look at uh, the Bicotran and, and evaluate the effects of a thrombin inhibitor. We know that thrombin is very important in coagulation and via the uh, uh, activation of uh, proteinase uh, activated receptors, there's a significant increase in inflammation and signaling in a variety of systems. So we uh, talked to Boringer Ingelheim, uh, asked for some support from an investigator initiated grant and they were interested and excited to do that. And the data just came out just as the time when the uh, late-breaking abstracts were being accepted. And they also encouraged me, well, I just submitted it. it's interesting yes. new data. We saw a dramatic effect when we combined, uh, when we administered Debigatran in the diet, in the food, okay? The over chow. Time, in the chow. In the yeah, chow. In the chow. Rat chow. Uh, it's powdered, 
and we saw a dramatic increase in the cognitive performance compared to non-dibigatran non chow treated animals. Everything else was the same. Okay, so this is really big and I, I want to just jump back a little bit because you mentioned a couple of things that uh, caught my attention, obviously. One of them was the microglial story. So you've got these inflammatory cops running around in the brain, I guess. And do you have any thoughts about what's turning those microglia on? Yeah, uh, basically we see a dramatic increase in vascular expression of TNF as well. I'll show a slide of that just to show the audience. Okay. But we, we know that there's a vascular inflammation that's exacerbated in hypertensive animals by hypoperfusion, adding that component of carotid stenosis. So uh, we believe that it's originating in the vasculature, and then there's changes in the permeability of the vessels associated with activation of other molecules, which we're going to look at, like uh, 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 matrix metalloproteidase uh, 9, which we know degrades uh, the matrix and breaks down the blood vessels so that they're leaky. And we've seen this in the fiber tracts and injury to the fiber tracts. So this is what we believe to be going on. And we need to look at the bigotran and see if that's reversing that. We haven't got to the mechanistic studies yet. Okay. Now another question I have to ask you is about the possible status of amyloid in the brains of these animals. Uh, I don't know if you're looking there yet or you will we're look just, there. We're just beginning to look at, the, at that. I'm, I'm collaborating with another individual, not only on uh, amyloid there, but also on the combination of vascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, and in Alzheimer's models. We're now starting to combine them because we know most humans exhibit both. And that's one of the primary reasons we uh, become demented. So these rats are not transgenic or these uh, mice? No, only or inbred. The rats. SHRs are yeah. inbred. Okay. All right. So we're not quite there yet, but it's on the table for further study because no. that, that's going to be very, very interesting yeah. part of I've it. I've been asked that several times. It is okay. an important question. Yeah, because yes. all, we all feel that there's a, a continuum here. And when we used to think as clinicians that vascular risk factors were separate from Alzheimer's disease, it took us a long time to come around to understand that the same risk factors for heart attack and stroke and for vascular cognitive impairment are also associated That's gone through an interesting cycle, Alzheimer's. hasn't it? Initially yes. they thought it was all, then it went back, no, and then now it's CV, CV disease is very important. Yes. Exactly, so it's all swung around and your work could be very pivotal here in terms of putting this all together. So then the other thing is the dabigatrin, the uh, direct thrombin inhibitor, and uh, that seems to have an important role here. And, and, and could you speculate again about what might be going on in terms of why you're seeing this uh, result? Well, we're certainly going to look at uh, vascular inflammation and expression of TNF. We're certainly uh, going to look at, well, we're thinking about looking at uh, microglia, okay, of course, because they, they also express TNF, toxic to the tissue. And then we have to start looking at uh, microthrombi. I haven't looked at that yet, but now I think there's a good uh, reason to go further and understand if it's not only decreasing the inflammation we already know about in the model, but perhaps a microthrombi that develops that contributes to the injury in, in these fiber tracts. So we've got a lot of possibilities here. You're going to be focusing down on a number of additional hypotheses. Uh, just in a sum up, can you give us uh, the bottom line? Well, we saw some very, very dramatic effects on cognition and gait balance that is uh, at deficit in animals under these conditions. And we need to understand more about the mechanism now. We're going to go in there and understand it. Well, Frank, we want to congratulate you for some really exciting work, and we look forward to seeing more so we can bridge this gap and, and get, get this particular problem uh, prevented and better treated. So Thanks, thank you so American much. Heart, for the sport.